Thank you for listening to the BJJ Brick Podcast. We'll be bringing you Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and good times. We hope to flatten your Jiu-Jitsu learning curve, help you get the most out of your grappling ability, and meet your goals both on and off the mat. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. This is the BJJ Brick Podcast, the award-winning podcast. We have Joshua Bacchiao on the show today. I want to thank him for taking time to talk to Byron Jabara. Speaking of Byron Jabara, I'm on the phone with him, and I'm on the phone with my good buddy, Gary Hall. We're here for episode 345. We're going to start with a quote from the great Michael Jordan. Always turn a negative situation into a positive situation. You know, guys, that's actually uh, easier said than done oftentimes. I don't know what your secret is. I'll just throw one out. And and one thing I do is I just look for small victories. It's hard sometimes in the face of defeat or on the back end of two weeks of class that have been difficult. It's hard sometimes to find, to turn, to just take that whole situation and turn it into a positive. But if you take a minute and you look for small victories, you can usually find a few of them. And then you just build off of that. What do you think, Gary? I'm with you. Small victories. Um, a lot of times your first reaction will, you know, be upset. You know, if something doesn't go your way. And normally if you just sit there and think about it for a few minutes, you'll be able to find some small victories. And, uh, you know, basically, as Michael Jordan says, turn a negative into a positive. Turn that frown upside down. Gary's always had uh, some sort of small skill fingers. to turn a small <laughs> thing into. I knew, I knew that was going to come into play here today. You got to celebrate <laughs> sometimes the yeah. small things, well, Gary. Byron was actually upset because Joe asked me the question, but Byron took some time and found a way to turn that into a small victory. That's true. So I, good job, Byron. I, I, I already claimed victory on this one. No, I, I really like it, and and I was kind of thinking about this whole. So I, we got to say this: we record our episodes quite a bit in advance. Um, just Joshua's interview, we I recorded that on March twelfth. So just to give you a heads up. We're, we'll talk a little bit about the virus, but not a lot, not a ton. And and right now, like it's 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 a what's today's date? The fifteenth. So we're a little bit in advance here, so we're not up to date on the what the current news status is. But um, it, this a lot of gyms are closing. You know, they hey they put a week. We're gonna close for two weeks. We're gonna close for indefinitely. Whatever they put some number up there. If they're closed today. They're closed tomorrow. Uh, wh- whatever. How could how could you switch this into a negative or to a positive? And and granted, uh, it's a negative situation. You know, people. People, this will, people will die from this and that sort of thing. Um, the jiu-jitsu community, uh, I think we have an advantage um, with just generally being fit and healthy. And and if you're going to get sick, going into it, a fit person is a great thing versus going into it, you know, sitting on the couch all day long and 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 just not doing anything for yourself or for your body. Like come into this thing strong and you'll do better. And plus, it, it like it, I don't know. So all that being said. It's a terrible thing. It's a negative thing. How could you turn not training for a week or two weeks or two months or whatever it is into a positive thing for your training? And I think it it's it's you still work out, you amp it up, you work out hard, you 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 find things that are safe to do exercise wise, and uh, and you and you come back in better shape uh, than you were when you left because. For me, I know jujitsu. Sometimes I could be kind of lazy. I could I could use technique or I could use positions to to take it easy sometimes. But if I if I start hitting uh, the weights a little bit better or start hitting the, the you know jogging or running a bit harder, I'm going to come back in actually better shape than when I left. So that's my I'm going to turn this into I'm going to come back and and be uh, a little more fit. I like it, Byron. Um, you know, one thing I've said about this whole. Uh, uh, coronavirus that, and I've mentioned this to a lot of people and, you know, turned a negative into a positive, but, you know, the one thing I never did very well was, um, wash my hands. I never washed my hands enough and I never realized it till, uh, this coronavirus and, you know, talking about proper ways to wash my hands. And the only, and, actually know, the only been, time Gary washes his hands is in the shower. <laughs> yeah. That's why he says, yeah. don't forget the shower. Cause he's at least yeah. clean his hands. Yeah. 
but I have probably told a hundred people, you know, one of the positives came out with this is I now have better hand washing techniques, which is going to lead to myself, uh, being less sick in the future, my family, my friends, close, my training partners. Um, so, uh, you know, that was one positive I got out of this because, you know, this is going to blow over, uh, you know, there's going to, like you said, it's, it's not good, but you know, that it will be gone. We will be back to normal, but you know, we're going to come back to normal. I am going to have better hand washing techniques, which is, which is important. I am going to have, uh, my body is going to feel better. Um, you know, I'm going to let some of the aches and pains rest. So, you know, there's a positive and I'm going to come back recharged to, uh, to roll. I, I've taken time off before and it seems like every, t- I mean, I've never taken off three or four months, which, you know, who knows what could happen. But, you know, every time I do take a week or two off, I do come back better. Um, you know, I think it's just because I'm so excited to train. So, yeah, the the, the hand washing thing is, is, I think, an opportunity for an off the mat lesson. Uh, so the current standard that that they're saying is like 20 seconds or something or like sing a certain song or have you guys heard these things? Yeah, yes. sing, sing your ABCs or something. Yeah, yeah. once I learn those, I can't hold the paper with my alphabet on it and, and wash my hands at the same time. So what? once I memorize the ABCs, I'll be able to do that one. So uh, look, looking at that and thinking about it, I've yet to sing a song while I wash my hands. But I have. Out loud? Do it out loud, yes. Gary. You know how funny that would be? <laughs> I have. ABCs. <laughs> That's good. I like that's they what know, we should do. They know I'm serious. They they know yeah. you are serious. And then if you stutter or have to start over again, yeah, that's even funnier. Anyway, the the whole thing about wash your hands for 20 seconds, it re, it reminds me of I need to do 10,000 arm bars to be a good arm bar guy. Like there's no quality in 20 seconds. I think they're just generally saying it takes a while. I it seems like it would be better if you need to 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 you know wash the back of your hand you know like for five seconds each back of the hand and then your palms and then maybe your fingernails carry stuff or maybe um <laughs> particular well, fingers you, are more dirty your yeah. fingernails do the way you were talking about toilet paper earlier <laughs> so i it just seems there's literally no technique at all and i don't know if that's it just seems like it's like just 20 seconds is good well 20 seconds of of what, like how much of that is supposed to be rinse? How much is that is, uh, with the, you know, under the water versus just lathering up. I don't know. It just, it just What's reminded that? me of the, I need to do 10,000 arm bars to be good arm bars. And they, all your arm bars are garbage. Like you, you're not controlling posture. You're not doing, uh, you know, you have a totally unresistive, you have a, uh, literally a grappling dummy in your house that you're training with during the virus and you're doing 10,000. I mean, I'm a master at arm bars now. No, you still suck at arm bars cause they're all bad. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. Yeah, it, it makes sense, and I'd say, yeah, you can you can uh, take that to your whole approach to training. You can just splash water on your hands, run them under soap on your hands, run them under the sink, and be good. You can also just put a gi on and go to class and and stumble through it and say, oh, I went to class tonight. So uh, I like that, Byron. Uh, be be thoughtful about your training, uh, have a plan, and follow the plan. <laughs> Yeah. And so, you know, obviously this isn't the virus podcast for jiu-jitsu, but um, I I plan on making a video and I might release that in audio format on the podcast just because it it gets a lot more views than any videos we have on our YouTube channel or Facebook. But um, just about supporting your gym and supporting the team and doing things to to kind of, if if you want your jiu-jitsu gym to be there, when this is over, if it's a month or six months, you need to support it if you can. And I, I this this will kill some jujitsu gyms. There's no doubt in my mind. Like some jujitsu gyms can't survive a week being closed and losing a few students. Like that's and take that to a month or six months. A lot of people are going to find different jobs to do, and they're not coming back. So if your if your coach is unable to. Uh, to keep the school open, you're, you're putting yourself in a spot where you might not have a place to go train when it, when you can. So if you can support your gym, you should do that if you want it to be there when, when this is all over. But I'll, well, cer- 
Cer- certainly, uh, if you're only looking at maybe taking a few weeks off, you shouldn't go pull your membership or tell your coach you're not going to pay. At least, at least that's my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Byron. Do you guys have any confirmed cases up there in Wichita? Yeah, we we had uh, at least a couple of days ago. We had one for sure in in our. I think we had two in our one of our hospitals. Um, yeah, I thought it was two. Yeah, they they have two down here in the uh, Lafouche Parish, which is a pretty small. For anybody listening out from Louisiana, that's what they call counties around here, but pretty small area, and they got had two of them when I came to work. They may have more now. Yeah. And like like I said, this the recording this is the fifteenth. <laughs> so by the time it comes out, this is all old news and maybe there's hundreds or dozens or we only had two. <laughs> or everybody or everybody's back to normal life and wondering what we were panicked about. Yeah. So but really it, it, it just is terrible for spreading sickness. <laughs> this is about the worst thing you could do as far as get super close to be in a room of fifty people and literally give everybody a five minute hug. Uh, that either like I don't know. That's if you if you look at it, it's we're a petri dish in there, and it's it's not the best thing to do. So anyway, guys, with uh, with that, I do want to real quick give a shout out to our uh, audiobook six training games for BJJ. Um, just kind of changing some of the the things you do while you roll to um, get the most out of uh, like experimenting with your game. Check it out. It's a little over an hour long. It's it's five ninety nine. The money will go support the podcast, and uh, when you get back on the mat, it might give you some new stuff to work on. Um, yeah, provided we're still off the mat, <laughs> we don't really know. <laughs> but check it out. There's a link to to both my audiobooks in the show notes. If you're if you're bored sitting at home because you couldn't go to school or work or whatever, it'll give you a little bit more audio content to listen to. So we got that going on. Um, yeah. Yeah. You, you know, I th- thinking about it, podcasts are going to be great. Um, you know, a lot of people are going to be off their off work. Schools are going to be, you know, off a lot of time to, to listen to podcasts, to catch up on, you know, all, uh, all of our episodes. So, uh, stay great. Home. Time. Yeah. Stay home and start with episode one. Oh man. Yep. Uh, we've, <laughs> we've heard of a few people doing that. <laughs> just, just starting at the beginning. Man, we've improved. If you could believe it, listening to this 345th episode, uh, we've actually worked quite a bit worse. <laughs> and it, not yeah. necessarily that we were doing terrible, just the audio has has changed a lot, editing techniques, and and, and, and we've learned a lot along the way. So, yeah. But, Most people think episode 347 is our best ever, so you might want to check that one out. Give it a couple weeks, Gary. <laughs> Give it a couple of weeks, but yeah, the we Gary has been quarantined to the west side of town. I'm on the east side of town, and Joe's in another state entirely, <laughs> keeping uh, some distance from each other on this one. Anyway, guys, uh, Joshua is is com- his interview is coming up. Um, we, I'll put a link to an article about him. He he had a very aggressive and very rare type of cancer that kind of surprised him, and. Uh, I, you know, I guess I, I mentioned already, like if you come into getting sick and you're really fit, that's a, that's a pretty good advantage versus somebody who, you know, smokes several packs of cigarettes a day and eats nothing but little Debbie snacks and watches movies on the couch or Netflix. Uh, so Joshua came into this, this, this thing very fit. Now that may or may not have made a difference, but that's, I don't know, that's my strategy is if you're going to have to do something crazy, um, physical or um you know taxing on your body at least it's starting off at a good point and uh and so he he got through this and it, it, it's i think it's one in every million or five million people get this type of cancer and uh, he'll describe it a little bit better um but and most of them are older and so that somebody as young as him getting this is is really unheard of but he uh Top level competitor. I mean, he's got wins over a lot of people, including Josh Hinger, who's been on the podcast. And it's just that's where he was. And then he gets hit with this. So it's just like now his whole life is was different. And and now he's he's really taking coaching a lot more. Uh, that's that's kind of what he's doing. He's wanting to get back to competing. Um, so just kind of an amazing story. And uh, uh, glad he kind of got on our radar. Check out the article uh, about him as well. Uh, I think it's Jujitsu Times. 
I'll put a link to it in the show notes. And uh, yeah, here goes Joshua Bakiel. All right, my friends, I'm happy to bring Joshua Bakayel to the BJJ Brick Podcast. Joshua, welcome to the show. Thank you. Nice to be here. It's it's nice to have you. To uh, I've done some reading reading about you and, and, and learning about some of your story. Uh, a great competitor. Um, you've had some, some definite hurdles thrown at you in life and, um, and, and now full-time coach. Is that correct? Yes, that is what I'm. That's what I'm doing, basically all the time. I'm living in and out of the gym. Let's. So. let's uh, I, I do want to kind of get a little bit of backstory here. Uh, what? Tell me about you. Um, what got you started on the mats and 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 kind of like the beginning of your journey so far? Um, so I'm a lifelong martial artist kind of story. I started in traditional martial arts when I was about seven. In uh, a style called Kung Nu, um, thing I can make it uh, I can uh, s- make it similar with is karate, basically. So a lot of forms and like hard style Shotokan karate concepts, and um, <clears throat> and then basically seeing the UFC and wanting to fight, um, having that drive um, to do something big and just having a, a, a high competitive drive. Um, took me into uh, eventually seeing MMA and wanting to get into that. So that's what spurred my interest in grappling. Um, so I kind of made it that transition from traditional martial arts into jiu-jitsu and wrestling at about the same time, which isn't usually the case. I know a lot of usually like somebody will wrestle first and then transfer over to BJJ. Um, I kind of happened to start them at the same time. Um and then just went out, just went in from on from there um, uh, to start fighting professionally um, in MMA when I was 18, and you know training boxing and Muay Thai and kickboxing and just continuing my wrestling and BJJ um, training over the years. And where were we going with that? Well, I did just that? that's a good way to start. <laughs> um, so that's a. That is interesting. You you were doing wrestling and jujitsu at really the same time. So like like I don't know. Monday you go to jujitsu and Tuesday you go to wrestling. Like was it like that, or you go to wrestling practice during the week and jujitsu at on the weekends? Or yeah, so that was um, that was basically my junior year of high school. Okay, when I started actually got to see the see this stuff and be like, oh okay, and then jump into it. Um, so yeah, it was like wrestling throughout the week and then maybe starting BJJ a couple day, a couple nights a week after that. Um, you know, and then I was wrestling during a little bit during the summer, just certain days and jujitsu and probably actually doing more jujitsu than wrestling really at that time. Um, my school, my school's program was crap, you know, to be honest. And we went through about four different coaches within two seasons. And, um, uh, some other, tr- some other issues that I ran into didn't allow me to, um, really pursue wrestling uh, at the time. Like I would have wanted to, but you know, I was doing it throughout my junior and senior year off and on and, um, focusing more on the, on the BJJ side of it though. Um, was there, it seems like I, a lot of wrestlers that, that I, train with that are still active with that um they kind of have a different style of wrestling just because of the influence of jiu-jitsu did you have a lot of that as well yeah yeah i mean i i think so um just (laughs) my wrestling and and grappling has changed you know obviously so much over the years and i've just continued to develop and evolve that by getting with the best guys around me that i can wrestlers i've always said are my favorite people to train with and I will I will seek them out you know wherever they wherever they lie um and get with those guys um to push myself and become a better grappler and and wrestler in general I really have a lot of passion for wrestling actually and um I have had um more just traditional wrestlers tell me that my style is kind of weird for (laughs) wrestling you know yeah and I can't tell you exactly what um, 
you know, what that is, what techniques that is. But I think, um, though, over the last few years, the last five or six years, you know, my wrestling's probably gotten to be more of what you would see in a typical, at a typical, at least college level of wrestling um, with the style and certain um, principles that I use. Okay. Yeah. The, the having kind of a weird style isn't necessarily a bad thing, is it? Like it kind of gives them uh, problems to deal with that they're not used to dealing with, whether that's a teammate or a competitor. If you move a little bit differently and it's still good, it's uh, it sometimes can be confusing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It just opens up a new, a new rabbit hole, right? Yeah. It, it, uh, it, that's a good way to say that. So, uh, where are you at as far as like, like what city are you in training and, and what school are you, are you with? So I run the Gracie Baja here in Kirkland, Washington, which is the, uh, they call it the East side of Seattle. So if you live in, if you, if you're in the Seattle, the greater Seattle area that we call it the East side, which is across on the East of Seattle, um, across the bridge, and it's kind of, um, it's a nice, pretty nice area. Um, you got Bellevue, Kirkland, Redmond, and um, some other outlying areas. And uh, Gracie Baja is kind of a big network, actually, out here in the Northwest. Yeah. We have a lot of schools, so there's kind of a big um, family Gracie Baja um network atmosphere out here where the school you know people kind of communicate and it's good for the students because they can kind of travel and cross train at all these different gyms that are pretty local um especially in an area like seattle where the traffic sucks and like people work all over the place and everything um yeah so uh so kirkland's a bit you know obviously much smaller than seattle and i really love it out here on this this side actually um I coach there full time. I'm there every day, um, just uh, doing what I can. You know, the, just loving every minute of it. Really. Yeah, it, you got. It, it, I would just. I'm just guessing here. It, you competed through much of your jujitsu. As far as uh, anybody who wrestles, they get. They get. They compete. I mean, you could. Somebody could do jujitsu for five or ten years and not compete. But if you're a wrestler. You're going to compete. So, did you take that? Did you compete jujitsu and wrestling uh, the entire time you were training those? Um, <clears throat> so it's harder to get. It's harder to find, depending on where where you're at, to find wrestling tournaments. That's for true. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> ad- adults. That's the only thing. I would actually. I would be <laughs> doing it more. Um, and I've sought out uh, wrestling tournaments at 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 a few different times, um, you know, over the past decade or so, but, um, it's usually, it's pretty, it's hard to get into. Um, but I've, I've, yeah, I've done it. I've, I've driven out to Spokane, um, which is like four hours from here, you know, several years back and, um, they're in the middle of a snowstorm and and went out to a tournament because I just wanted to, to compete, um, with some college level guys. And, um, yeah, I've done that. I have a lot. I uh, honestly like I I love wrestling so much, and I feel like I've grown so much in it that um, you know I still have a lot of uh, desire to compete in it at a at a higher level. Actually, um, you know, but as uh, <clears throat> as you know, um, I guess from finding out about me. Uh, I had some stuff happen last year that kind of got me off track a bit with competing and well, you know, really everything is a little bit of a slowdown, but, um, you know, I still have a lot of, uh, aspirations to compete at, um, in, at the high level, um, in anything really that I'm doing, um, whether that, uh, but mainly anything, no gi, um, I, I like, I love the gi as well, but, um, I'm a little bit more suited towards no gi and that's re- what I'm more passionate about. So whether that's freestyle wrestling, um, or big no gi tournaments like the worlds, um, ADCC or, um, submission only tournaments as well. 
anything like that, that's kind of what I'm geared for and more focused in on when it comes to competing now. Yeah. Just, just looking at those um, bigger tournaments. You talked about uh, last year. Uh, so so what happened uh, last year that, that kind of derailed everything? So um, last year is when I moved up. I, I As we were, you and I were discussing, um, I moved, I moved uh, from the northwest to North Carolina and spent a couple years over there. Um, and then I had this opportunity to come back out to the northwest and... Um, I jumped on it and, um, definitely have, you know, it's definitely, it was definitely a good decision. Um, so I got here last March and, uh, I started competing in a couple tournaments pretty quickly after I got here. Um, like a couple super fights and a tournament, the, the, uh, Shogyo tournament and, um, so I, I think uh, April, um, I was having some. I th- I actually I thought I had a concussion, so I was kind of training off and on, and then I stopped. I'm like, I think I have a concussion. I should stop training. So I focused on just teaching, and um, <clears throat> regardless of that, um, besides that, I started noticing um, blood in my urine. Um, mainly just after like really hard training sessions or like the sauna. And I was like, I'm not hydrating enough. Um, you know, and I thought I was giving myself rhabdo that you might be familiar with. No, I don't uh, know. I don't know rhabdo. So rhabdo is like, uh, what CrossFitters, um, CrossFitters are some of the most common athletes to get it is what I've been told. Um, where it's just over, exerting your certain muscle groups so much that um, there's too many toxins coming into your body at once and you can't and it can't be filtered out uh, so you can get like brown or uh, maybe red urine I'm not positive um, so I was going pretty I, I trained basically I, I trained like crazy for two weeks before that uh, Shugyo tournament okay to kind of make up the losses of uh, taking time off because of, of thinking that I had a concussion, <clears throat> um, and I was and I kept noticing this blood in my urine, and um, so I wrote it. I I thought I started going. I went to the doctor a little bit. Um, I thought it was rhabdo. weren't really figuring anything out. Um, so competing that tournament. Um, I still, I'm still noticing this a month or so later, just very, in, but just not very frequently, you know, and, um, started notice it's starting to get worse. Like my body was like shutting down more after that would happen. Uh, and, um, so then I, after not thinking it was rhabdo, I was like, oh, okay, maybe it's a kidney stone. You know, I'm asking my doctor friends and blah, blah, blah. Um, so, but I ended up finally getting into uh, a urologist and, you know, and having to do some different um, um, scans and other ways to look at my bladder and see what's going on. And so... You know the rest. I uh, it turned out that I had a form of cancer in there, and um, so yeah, so I had I had like a surgery to look at that, and then they found out it was isolated to that area, which is great. Um, and uh, so I then had another surgery scheduled. Um, to, which is, it's called a, it's called a radical, um, cystectomy or basically it's it's radical surgery, um, where they're removing, you know, organs. So that was taken out. Um, and, um, yeah, so that was taken out and I have what's called a neobladder, which is a, a section of my, my own intestines was cut out and formed into a bladder, you know, and, uh. Yeah. So how, a, how, uh, that sounds, I mean, it's, from what I've read, 
one person in five million get this type of cancer. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'd imagine the first thing you did was go look online and found like not much information. <laughs> like that's that's yeah. got to be how how uh, like that's got to be terrifying. It was. It was really, you know, there, the blood and the urine thing, you know, caught me go off guard, and you know, enough in itself. And then as this thing progressed, and they were like, uh, you know, the, somebody suggested, oh, we have to check for cancer. I'm like, you know, and in my head, I'm like, cancer? I'm like, wait, what? You know, I got to think about that right now. Um. So yeah, it's. It's pretty unnerving, like, you know, it's the kind of thing you you don't think about until it happens to you. So, yeah. um, and so that was all that happened late last year in. So, yeah, I, I mean, like I said, it was it was happening in, you know, April. Okay, it started. Okay, yeah. March or April, I think I might have noticed a little, and started noticing it and then. My final surgery was was October okay. first, so it dragged out through the throughout the the whole year. Basically, I, I still got to compete, like I said, a few, a handful of times, um, you know, between like April and June or something. Yeah. So, Joshua, where are you at uh, now with this? If you don't mind me asking. So now I just, um, you know, I was just dealing with uh, what goes with that kind of surgery and everything and just um, recovering from that, you know. Do do you Um, have to go back and and get checked for cancer every certain amount of time or or do the doctors say that from here you're you're good or what's what's that look like? That's mandatory, you know, when you have gotten cancer, like that's, you know, standard screening. Yeah. So yeah, I've uh, um you know, I've already been back for one of those now. Um and you know, that's like a that's like a thing that um they'll check, you know, every 3 months okay. starting out. Um and then uh, vin- and, you know start to slowly draw back on it. You know. It's uh, you know, it's not it, it's good, you know, that we can um talk about it a little bit, you know, cuz maybe it's it's good awareness for somebody out there to take that kind of stuff seriously yeah. if you well, do I, notice something it, like that. Especially guys were the worst, you know, like you will ignore something a super like you had a like you thought you had to figure it out. The reason why there's a little bit of blood in my urine is cuz I'm training too hard. I'm going, you know, really pushing myself. But uh a lot of guys will see something like a big sign, uh, you know, like something might be wrong with my body and we just hope it goes away. That's that's mm-hmm. always a bad idea. <laughs> you know, right. like it, it we we live in in a day that that uh, we're very fortunate with with modern medicine but if you don't use it you know if you just hope it goes away hope it gets better and you're letting weeks or days tick by and uh you're not giving yourself the advantage to to beat something that that that, that oftentimes people need so right exactly yeah um you know and i half i was like half you know how the um <laughs> I'm sure you're familiar with, you know, the medical system here in the States and, you know, how it's not easy for everyone to have insurance and how expensive insurance can be. And especially with uh, BJJ people, my experience is, you know, many do not, even though we're doing something that's dangerous, Um, you know, so... Yeah, so that I was kind of on the fence, like, oh, well, you know, do I do this? Do I do this? This is expensive. This is expensive, you know. And it came down to a money thing. And uh, event, you know, at, at a certain point, I was just like, well, I'll go. You know, I need to, I need to make sure what's going. I need to see what the hell's going on. Yeah. And um, yeah, and it, you know, and it's good. Uh, I'm lucky that also that. I am live an active lifestyle um, too because, as I said, um, I was noticing it after really hard training. Yeah, that's uh, I wasn't noticing it when I wasn't doing anything. 
so you know that kind of that gave me um an earlier glance at it than somebody might not have if they live a sedentary lifestyle yeah you know yeah that that totally makes sense is you know i don't it could have been weeks earlier or months earlier but you noticed it earlier and it and it, and it kind of raised your eyebrows hey what's going on here um and and also just be an, an active person if you're going to have to and it sometimes it doesn't matter at all but if you're going to have to like deal with your health issues would you rather be rather really fit or you know lay on the couch smoking cigarettes all day like eating junk food like one of those people is statistically going to do better going through surgeries yeah. or having to deal with a lot of uh you know stresses on their body and it's going to mm-hmm. be the person who's fit um and mm-hmm. and you in sometimes it doesn't matter it could have been you know something that that's totally irrelevant but it's it's always an advantage to try to to be healthy before you have to face something like that and and it sounds like as far as your your competition level and and your and and and, and the guys you were competing with top tier uh, grapplers it's like you when this challenge was brought to you uh you yeah you were in amazing shape and and I don't know if it had a factor to do with it but it uh, definitely didn't hurt. It doesn't hurt the um, recovery, you know, and everything. My doctor spoke a lot about that, and they said I did, you know, ex- just <laughs> exponentially well. But, you know, um, even if it's in comparison to uh, my, like, 70-year-old um, people that I'm being compared with, but because uh, the surgery is not done, you know, typically on somebody my age. Okay. So, um, but because but because of that same reason, you know, I've been able to recover pretty damn fast, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and I, you know, I was already kind of back to training. I, I don't remember the exact time frame, but. You know, by the new year, for sure, I was I was training again. I picture what you do for training <laughs> It's quite a bit differently than what I do for training. I I went today and I rolled three or four rounds. Uh, you know, with with guys here, I I train with quite a bit. Um, so how did you did you kind of tiptoe back into that, and and how is that you're training right now as far as getting you back? It sounds like you're you're eager to to get back to competing as soon as you can. Yeah, I was looking at doing um, a little warm up kind of tournament um this weekend and it got shut down for oh yeah for the reason that you can probably guess uh, <laughs> well if some somebody's listening to this like five years from now uh is that the coronavirus they, they've closed a yeah. lot of tournaments yeah so i had some guys going i was you know i was like what the hell i, I sh- i'll probably jump into it as well um that's the revolution tournament here it's like the biggest uh local tournament here in the Seattle north in the Washington. Yeah. And so um um basically what I can tell you is I've been training hard. Yeah. <laughs> quotations, you know. Um I I did I sort of tiptoed back in, but um yeah, so I I think I I, I started I actually before December I kind of started tiptoeing um I went in a little bit too much, I think, and I dialed it back because I I was like, all right, I don't want to give myself hernias and all these have complications with this surgery, you know, and that would be terrible. Like, and I go back for another, have to fix all that up again, you know, because it was a lot of cuts and stitching and different things. So, um, you know, I did, but at this point now, you know, actually after December, my nurse and doctor were kind of like, eh. You know, what the hell, just uh, whatever, it's kind of whatever you think now, bud, because <laughs> cause, uh, like we said, like, we don't, the people that have this surgery aren't asking, um, you know, when can I pick people up and slam them on the floor again, they're, <laughs> they're just asking, like, when can I get in the pool again, you know, okay. or you know what I mean, so they don't, they don't have a, um, really long track record for that uh so that's uh, yeah, new territory I, I, any idea why you got it so young did the doctor have any theories or just just draw because the it, cards or what well they just you know that like you said that's a it's um 
it's a rare thing, so they don't have as as much research on yeah. it, right? That's the problem. But um, but they suspect those those um, they suspect I think those gen- that uh, branch of uh, cancer is um, probably like some kind of exposure related thing. Hmm. As opposed to like a lifelong yeah um, smoking thing affecting your lungs or like a, some kind of hereditary um, you know gene. Interesting. So um, yeah. I have my yeah. I mean, I have some I have some speculations, but you know, it's hard to You'll say. You'll never but, really know for sure what 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 happened or what caused it. Yeah. Probably, you, I mean. So you, you mentioned a while uh, earlier in our conversation that you really like training with wrestlers, and, and just kind of who they are. Um, what, what about the the wrestler and training with them? What, what do you like so much about that versus just the average or or like even top jujitsu competitors? What's what's the difference there that you that you see? One, I just. The way that I, um, I value wrestling, I value takedowns. Um, I think it's important, and I have a lot of passion for it as well. I find it really interesting. I find that people, um, I find that the scrambles and opportunities and pathways that you can take in wrestling is very similar to. Um, jiu-jitsu and people don't give it that credit a lot of the time um, people kind of think of jiu-jitsu as the more intelligence based thing and wrestling is the more power athletic athletic athleticism based you know thing if I'm sure you've kind of um, heard things like sure. that maybe so um, but I don't I don't see it so much that way I do see I I do see the, um, you know, some of that there with maybe with with um, athleticism. Um, <clears throat> anyways, I'm just saying that wrestling is extremely interesting, and there's okay. so many there's so many opportunities um, and different things that can happen, just like on the ground um, that a lot of people don't um, open their eyes to, and and besides that. If you if you don't value uh, takedowns at some level, um, you really got to question like <laughs> your perception of what grappling or what jujitsu is. You know, um, I think it's a huge it's that's a huge part of it. If you're gonna look at jujitsu as a martial art, you have to look at how you get it to the ground, right? Yeah. Um. And pulling guard is just not going to cut it all the time. And so, I mean, if you're looking at it from a self-defense standpoint, you're not pulling guard is largely useless. Not all the time, but largely useless in, in a street fight or something like that. Yeah, and just to have – it doesn't take – uh, 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 like elite competitive level of takedowns to be able to take down a guy that's giving you trouble. The typical guy. I mean, anybody could be giving you trouble at any given place. But like, if you just learn some basic takedowns and 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 kind of have a one or two that you feel comfortable doing in a tournament or whatever, like that's a lot better than having zero. <laughs> uh, that's yeah. like, like that's a lot better. <laughs> It's never about the, it's never about the quantity, right? It, or yeah, it's about the the quality of what you, the, the quality of what you're bringing. It's not the hundred techniques. Yeah, you know, it's the two that are that are perfect. Yeah, and oftentimes anyways. trying to learn a hundred techniques is is a disaster, and you learn end up with nothing. It is a disaster. That's one of the things I've, I'm trying to get away from. You know, these days more simplicity, really just just more simplicity. And, um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, um, so there's that, my respect, my respect for take the takedown game yeah. and passion for it, but yeah. And then wrestlers, of course, 
all the stereotypical things that you would hear there is the you know the intensity that a wrestler will bring to it um to a training session yeah and um like I, I i got into this stuff to begin with um for mixed martial arts right so um it's probably not it's not uncommon for a mixed martial arts guy or girl to seek out the people that are best in certain crafts if they're smart yeah that, you know you'll want to you'll want to go to the best the best people in each uh, you know in each art and feed off of that you know and you and take a piece of that back with you so that's what i've that's basically what I've been doing for years. Yeah, and so uh, you're you're playing two different roles, um, at least as far as um, what you're doing there. You're, you're a competitor and also a coach. Can you kind of talk about how you have to change or what you do um, to do? Because to me, they're they're quite a bit different, and and not all competitors are, are great coaches, and some some of great coaches aren't much for you know competing. Um, but uh, from, it looks like you're doing both well, <laughs> uh, what's that like blending those two things and, and being able to, uh, to do both those at a high level? It is true. Like that when you're, when you start the coaching thing, um, you know, it can, that it can take away from your training. And a lot of that I think is just, is just, uh, a lack of energy or fatigue setting in from mat just mat hours. Um, you know, you only have a certain amount of of uh, of will that you can tap into each day, um, and I think maybe sometimes people burn that up during coaching and then uh, don't get the training skip out on the training part. So I think it, I think it comes down to, you know, being organized for one and having certain kind of, having a certain plan and uh, time that you set aside for yourself, um, to get your training in. And, uh, but that's really not different from any other area of your life that you're looking to grow at. You kind of have to just, you have to make time um, for that, and sometimes it has. That might mean you have to wake up early and do that stuff for yourself first. And, and it's like, okay, boom, that's now it's done. Okay. Um, and it definitely takes it takes drive and and everything to be able to uh, to do that. I think I I'm you know things get complicated, uh, more complex the older you get and the more people you get in your life and your circles and you gotta make the time um for personal growth and value that and see the value of that that when you do that for yourself you know it really makes you much more valuable to other people as well yeah um i will say um so i've been teaching um Really, though, since I was 21, about, okay. um, when I was a purple belt, I was already starting to, to get into teaching a little bit um, with my, my coach, Ross Kellen, um, in Florida, Lakeland, Florida. Um, I was already teaching young kids and teenagers um, and adult, adults and kickboxing, and just all of it, getting um, experience in that um, in those days. And so I've, I've taught. Um, I've taught for a, a handful of different places. I've taught for UFC gym and, you know, a couple of schools and, um, you know, this being the first opportunity to just have my own gym and really doing this like day in and day out, Yeah, you know, is a bit different and, bit, um, obviously more work. Um, but I have noticed with that consistency too that it'll you know the teaching part of it really does develop your understanding a lot better of 
what you're doing precisely, you know, and being precise about what you're is actually happening, you know, with the details of everything. Yeah. Um, so it does, it makes a big difference with that. Um, teaching is just a whole nother level of understanding. Um, you know, so moves that I've been doing for years, I have to act, I have to sit back and question those and, and make them even more precise. So it makes you better. That's my point. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. And, and I can think of many times where I'm teaching something and somebody says, do you put your legs over here or like that? I have no idea. I just do it. Let me me think about it. Let me try it. And uh, it makes you analyze what you're doing uh, at another level versus it just worked and it took a quarter of a second to pull off this thing. No, let's see what happened. Let's let's look at it. Let's try to break this thing down. And just knowing that, you're right, it, it does help your understanding. Um, you mentioned that you're, you really prefer no gi. Do you have a preference on what you're teaching? Do you prefer to teach gi or no gi or does that not matter? Um, you know, it doesn't matter. It's not, I don't think it's too much of a secret out there. Um, anyways, when I'm competing that, uh, my style is more no gi based than it is gi based anyways. So for example, um, you know, when I was a purple belt, I started watching Marcelo, a lot and was influenced a bit by that that style the butterfly the x guard that kind of game uh so i do that same i i'm gonna use the same game in the gi you know with some ver- with some variations um and with some grips but um you know my style is gonna be is not gonna change too much um so in that sense it doesn't matter uh too much um i would have to say i give i still give the edge to to nogi and still a, a little bit more passionate about nogi um for me it's you know it's the more um it's the it's just the more full spectrum thing um to not have to rely on the material um, and to have to understand the mechanics of the body for control. Um, and I like how in Nogi, it's, you're more reliant on having to trick someone um, into something because it can't be, it's not always so, um, so rigid and where you can just hold someone in place in the same way. Um, and, so it's that and, and it's the it's the scrambles and it's the the constant movement that allows opening um you know to to new pathways and everything that's interesting uh, Josh I want to get a little bit of advice from you um this not everybody can train like you do. <laughs> not everybody uh, really wants to or or has the same goals as far as competition. But if somebody, one of your students, just trains one to three times a week, uh, do you have any advice to tell them to get the most out of their training sessions? Oh yeah. So I would say most of my, you know, the my, I'm I run uh, I run Gracie Baja right. So it's the jujitsu for everyone. Um, you know, uh, a mentality, you know, you can be 60 years old. You can be, I have three, you know, I have a couple three-year-olds, you know, and everybody's different. Everybody has different goals and what they're doing with it. You know, it should be, everybody should be wanting to get in shape from it. Right. Everybody should be wanting to understand a little bit better how to defend themselves. Everybody should understand a little bit more about, have better awareness of their own body and what's going on and, and you know that you pick up over the years of how to not injure yourself um, and uh, so that advice right <laughs> so you said um, I, I, if they're only training, I, if they're only right if they're only training one day a week um, for example, it's going to come back to what we were just talking about um, predominantly with not 
trying to overload yourself with so many techniques. Like, it's so simple, you know, but, um, you know, that's a very common thing in, in BJJ because there's so many things that, possibilities, it's just kind of all over the, all over the, the board, right? You know, and so, I would, um, Focus on minimizing the techniques that you're that you're working on in in those sessions, whether that's just one or two. You know, I would look at and um, trying to find a game for yourself, starting to develop like, uh, you know, whatever whatever you sort of intuitively start to go towards, build on that. Yeah. And focus a lot on on the positional training too. You know, this is, I feel like this is, uh, this is becoming more common knowledge to the, the, uh, positional, the importance really of the positional training, because in a, if you just, if you just do 10 techniques and then go spar, for example, I would say that's not the best way. I would say, you know, drill, 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 uh, you know, one or two techniques in that session, refining them a little bit put them in set them into your memory now put them to the test with those with some positional training um i think that's how you can maximize the an hour uh training session and you're going to walk away and, and have a little bit more understanding about that position yeah yeah if you sh- if you show me i don't know arm bars from mount you know we do a few of those during the uh technique portion or drilling portion and we go to spar and I don't attain mount one time. <laughs> like I, it's hard to, to actually get that practice in that I need. And so just by starting in that sort of in the mount position a few times, you get to at least try those. Exactly. Another thing that I, another thing that's big for me too, is like attack, attack, attack. You know, jujitsu is not the art of countering. That's what I tell my uh, students. A lot of people get that confused, you know, and think that jujitsu is like, or you wait you wait for them to do something and then you can like reverse them um if you go you know train with marcelo that guy is just like all over you just dominating controlling the grips controlling the movement constantly moving and making and just forcing you into bad positions you know so if you are constantly attacking and looking at things in a hierarchical or hierarchical sense where you're you're passing and not just passing the guard to get to side control but you're passing into post mount or you're all over their back you know and they're gonna you take the uh you automatically get the lower hanging fruit you know just shoot for just shoot for positions like the back or the mount you know and then the or shoot go for the submission you know force them into force them into doing things that are that are uh, less than perfect. And all you do is you just continuously pull the person out of position. Yeah. I, I love that, that advice. Attack, attack, attack. It's just if if you haven't played that style of jiu-jitsu, you've had it played against you. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. There's no doubt. Everybody, We all experience that. It's just like I'm constantly defending this, and I'm constantly – I haven't got my game started yet – and um, it's like th- they're reacting to my defense in a way that they're they're used to it. They they deal with this defense I'm trying to do all the time. I'd rather not even be here at all. And it's just it, yeah, if you attack first and just keep going, it just it just puts that other person in a spot where they have to just deal with you in, in a way that they didn't plan on. And it uh, yeah, that's a great. And of course, yeah, of course, there's like there's crazy subs. And things that can pop out of nowhere, you know, when you're doing that and you're going to get caught too. But that's part of, you know, that's just part of the learning. But in the, as a general philosophy, when you're attacking, the other person is defending. And they have to get set back to neutral and just to get back into position and then maybe attack you. Yeah. So it's always pulling. And this is the same with the feet too. Like you're just, you're just, is just, uh, it's just have it's just um, positional, just having a, a positional 
dominance, you know. So positions like the back or certain leg entanglements or anything, like that's where you should be trying to shoot for, where you're just utterly controlling the person and putting them into a spot where they you can attack them in six different ways and they're just you know, fighting out of five ways to get caught into the, the last one. Joshua, uh, one more like advice style of question here. Um, if, if someone's listening and they've been doing jujitsu for a little while and they look at their game and it's like, man, I don't have any takedowns. W- what has been typically the easiest style of takedown or maybe um, something that you okay. can show a jujitsu yeah. person that they could pick up fairly easily? So, yeah, that's a... <laughs> That's a good question, and I think a, a lot of people deal with that issue, and they're, they, they're like, oh, I'm small and frail or <laughs> whatever, you know, and I don't want to shoot a double leg and get underneath somebody, and um, that's that's probably right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what I, it, and well, you know, this there's a big there's a big difference too with gi and no gi in in this area. Um, in the gi, you run into these, you run into the grips a lot more, and just a, a slightly different style of, we'll say, hand fighting, or a, a very different style of hand fighting. Um, I gotta say what. That's what it comes down to is hand fighting and having an understanding, again, of how to pull someone out of position. It's not just it's this takedown or it's that takedown. It's pulling someone out of position. And you do that by having strong, um, a strong hand fighting game. So like you were referencing... Um, my match with Josh uh, Hinger. Yeah, that's kind of what that uh, that match was. Uh, mostly was just a lot of slapping and <laughs> hand fighting and just jockeying for position. It was kind of boring uh, in that sense because it was just us trying to get a positional van- advantage over the other guy. Um, you know and. Um, so to be more specific, uh, here, what I would say is pull someone's head down okay. and pull them in, and pull them into the front headlock. I like that. Or another style, you know, or any, any kind of, um, posi- uh, positional position of dominance, you could say, you know, getting double underhooks, getting an, a- and getting double underhooks with an angle on their body. You're setting yourself up to be in. Um, for the takedown, um, shooting in for the legs, you know, it is, is good if you are maintaining position. If you shoot in and your head's getting stuffed to the floor, you have to change your position. Yeah. So that might be, uh, that might be changing off to the single leg, um, cutting out to the side and not staying crushed square to square, uh, square with their body stuck underneath them. So my, um, to summarize though, it's, it's hand fighting and getting to someone's head is one of the easier ones. I think, um, one of the simpler ways to do it, just pulling someone's head in, having a, a good, um, solid front headlock kind of game where you can basically do snap downs. Yeah, and I think that's one of the easier ways. I have no problem with that, and I feel like that's a, a simpler thing. You know, you don't have to shoot underneath someone. You're the one that's on tops, and you're just laying on them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I like the whole thing, and I, I like how it matches up with how you're talking earlier, as far as attacking, and it, it lets you start attacking them, and it, they'll have to react to that, or your attack will go really well. And it's just, uh, yeah, pull their head down. Not, not, you know, sure. There's a lot of details behind that, but it, right. it won't. It shouldn't there's go some, terribly. There's some details, forward. but there's that's the general idea yeah. is to pull their head down, and now you you're in a dominant position. Yeah, and if they just pop like up real hard, that's also a place that, that they'd rather not be. They don't want to to right. 
yeah you, now you're setting now you're setting up the shots yeah again. so that's I, I love that that's really good pull pull her head down you know try to just get uh kind of a headlock position and and boom you're 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 on the mat already uh you know working uh, a choke or to move to a different position and if they pull up you've got you've got options you put them in that spot where they had to make a decision of, of where they were trying to go and it's just like you're saying earlier just just be attacking and and put them on that on that defensive spot simple attack uh but that's you see that at all levels mm-hmm. kind of a snap down and, and and go to work so it's something that someone could start as a white belt and they could be doing it at black belt same thing <laughs> yeah exactly. it'll be with you the whole time yeah this is this has been great talking with you Joshua um uh anything else you want to tell the audience or share with the audience before I let you go i'm just excited to you know, for the future, I'm I'm excited every day. You know, to be able to share uh, my passion. And, uh, this has been, you know, a life. This is my lifelong journey, and this is what I like to give. You know, is fitness and wellness and health and uh, fun, and self defense, all of that. Um, yeah, and I'm I'm excited to to get back into to competing um, at a high level again. And um, you know, if, uh, if you're out there and, and listening and you're not into martial arts or you're considering your uh, kids being in martial arts, but you've been unsure, uncertain, I really, obviously I'm biased, but um, I can't, you know, recommend anything, any other sport or anything over getting into martial arts. There's just all the things that you hear are true. You know, there's not, there's not no negatives. There's injuries. Um, you know, well, that's probably the main thing, <laughs> but you know, there's injuries can happen, uh, just like in other sports. Um, but there's so much value t- to be had out of martial arts. Um, and particularly in, in grappling, you know, definitely for, for younger audiences like, um, wrestling or jujitsu, you know, I'm going to recommend over striking at a young age, um, and then building on that later. Um, but it's just, it's just an awesome thing, um, that everyone should be doing. You know, I, I do like that about the, uh, the Gracie Baja model, you know, the, uh, just trying to get everyone to do it because everyone has, I can, you know, think of a reason for everyone to do it. It's not the same reason for everyone, but I can think of a value and benefit that it, every single person can get out of uh, doing martial arts. Yeah. That, that's awesome. And yeah, if you're on the fence at all, uh, you get in there and try it and, and give it a fair try. Don't just try it once, but, uh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, what's the best place to go to follow you on social media or, or, or connect with the gym? Hmm. <laughs> so it's, um, I've been off my Instagram lately. Um, but I will go ahead and put it out there anyways, because I'm planning on getting back on and using it for more of a, uh, a content thing. Um, and actually just posting move like on, moves only, um, okay, videos cool. and that's uh at Bacchial 5000 uh so my last name b-a-c-a-l-l-a-o 5000 that's instagram um i'm on facebook of course joshua and um what was the other thing you said um the connect with the jammer or to to also gracie baja kirkland um yeah Gracie okay. ba- at Gracie Ball Kirkland on any uh, social media outlets. It's a good way to follow the gym and uh, some of our up and coming competitors. We have a lot of uh, we have fighters uh, now as well, so we have fighters and grapplers and a lot of things going on at the gym. It's pretty exciting. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure talking with you. You too, Byron. Thanks, buddy. I want to thank Joshua for hopping on here uh, with us and uh, sharing some of his story. And, you know, his, his the thing that he had was really rare. But, you know, a lot of our teammates are going through similar things that are that are hard uh, to go through. And um, supporting teammates in those times is really what, what a team is all about. So, <clears throat> you know, you could think of, yeah, we go compete together. Or, yeah, we go train together. But when somebody is 
getting their butt kicked by something like that, uh, supporting them uh, emotionally, financially, whatever you could do, like however you support somebody uh, in their time of need, that's what a team's about. And uh, I really appreciate him uh, hopping on here and, and sharing that story with us. And uh, look forward to, to watching him as he ramps up his competition mode uh, and uh, watch him do great again. You know, Byron, when you were introducing him, I was thinking that uh, it probably wasn't just his physical conditioning that helped him through it, but jujitsu also offers a great support network, and we build strong friendships in there. Um, and so as, as we're talking about this virus and gyms closing and some of us choosing not to train, that that's one aspect of jujitsu that could slip. So I'm sure that everybody is connected with their teammates. You've got phone numbers. You're connected on social media. So if you're not in class for an extended period of time due to this virus, keep in touch with your training partners. Reach out to them, um, and and don't let that aspect of your jujitsu slip either. That's great point, sense. Joe. Yeah, very good point. Yeah, we talk about that all the time, and uh, you know that support network is is huge. Uh, stay in touch, even if uh, you know you're not near each other, you're not training training with each other every day. It'll make uh, coming back afterwards that much easier, and you know it'll help uh, your teammates or yourself uh, get through some rough patches. Yeah. So, what are um, are we doing here, guys? If we're not training jujitsu, we're doing a podcast every day. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're doing what we can. Yeah, podcast is fairly safe. <laughs> but um so we we have an article of the week and typically we'll take an article uh about jiu-jitsu and talk about that. Sometimes we'll take an article from a different sport and kind of relate that back to jiu-jitsu. Uh then this is an article about running and and really just for beginners. And <clears throat> And take this for for what it's worth. I think we could we could relate a lot of these things right back to jujitsu or, or beginning jujitsu, or we could uh, talk about hey, you know, yeah, I'm a jujitsu nut and I love training, but I can't train for this week or this month. What do I do? Well, going outside and jogging or running, whatever you want to call it, depending on your speed, or just even walking, is something that's perfectly safe to do, as far as we know right now. <laughs> Uh, you, you know, you're, you got some distance between people, you're, you're outside in fresh air, whatever. So yeah, yeah I'm definitely running is going to be a part of my, uh, fitness. It, it has been, I, I'm, I've always kind of been a jogger, uh, you know, two or three miles is my pretty standard run a couple of times a week. And I guess I picked this up and, and go a little bit further, maybe a little bit faster as, as the, the weeks of no jiu-jitsu go by, um, I, I do want to come back with better cardio than when I left. Not worse, not the same. I want to come back and, and roll better for longer. I don't want to roll like Gary or Joe, you know, just just go, go, go. <laughs> but uh, so here we go. This is on, on runtastic.com, and it's start running. Eight extremely useful running tips for beginners. Man, if they're extremely useful, that's what we're looking for. And it... The first tip is start with short running intervals. Like, if you haven't ran for three years, going out and running five miles is probably a bad idea. Uh, and, you know, maybe it's talking about running two minutes and walk for two minutes and then run, like, kind of just ease into it. There's, same thing is if you, you bring a friend to class who's never trained before, you don't want them to roll for 30 minutes straight. Even if they, if they can, it's like, hey, take a break this round, you know, like, I don't want you to go as soon as you get home or as soon as you wake up in the morning, you're going to regret working too hard. Same thing with running. I think in jiu-jitsu, we're pretty good about ignoring some some physical pain and, and, and pushing past that sometimes. And that's that's literally all running is, is how do you deal with physical pain, your body telling you to slow down sometimes. And so we can ignore that sometimes. So uh, it's probably not a good thing to ignore, especially early on and if you're trying to pick up something new like running don't push too hard at the beginning uh, you could you could do some damage your body's not used to that type of exercise uh, so they, they recommend doing intervals like two minutes and two minutes you know and, ma- and make it to where it's easy uh, or, or not uh, not too crazy for you Byron don't start out running too fast uh, point number two Byron talked about how he wants to be in better shape better cardio shape which is going to be pretty easy for him when he comes <laughs> back uh, so, um, 
what can happen is we're like trying a new uh, new sport. Uh, we're going to try to run. We hear about people running marathons and we think, oh boy, we can go out and run uh, 10 miles easily or we can run, you know, six minute miles easily. And for people like myself and Joe, I, I don't think Joe runs either. Um, we could be in uh, some trouble. If we go out too fast, we're going to pull a hamstring. Uh, we pull a hamstring we're out there all of our cardio is done we will not be able to train at all we'll come back in worse shape so uh, you know big thing don't start off you know start running too fast uh, you know even kind of goes back to what byron was talking about intervals you know don't go too crazy out there so you know when i i guess i'm thinking of starting out too fast could be either too fast going too long or running too fast um but so you know be smart train smart as joe says uh train smart uh we don't want to be injured we want to be able to do this you know for a duration so um don't go too fast yeah it kind of seems looking through all these points that um part of what they're getting at is making your initial experience with running a good one uh, nothing will tank uh, an endeavor that you're setting out on more than just getting off to the wrong step right off the bat and, and having a bad experience. If you run for a few weeks and you enjoy it, you're likely to keep doing it. Uh, number three is your body needs time to recover. So if you try and r- if you're not a runner like I'm not, if I went out and I just tried to run as far as I could every day for three days, four days, I'd be so miserable that I, I, it's not something I would continue doing. So if I were to set off on a running uh, regime for training, I'd probably start with about three days a week. You think that's right, Byron? Yeah, sure. Yeah, something like that, three, four days a week. Take take at least a day in between, and then as I got in better shape, I could ramp that up to four or five days a week or six days a week. But initially, you need to give your body a little rest, especially between a new activity that it's not accustomed to. Yeah, that's uh, – it. if you – you could be in great juice of shape and then go run a mile or two and be pretty darn sore and maybe not be able to run for a few days. So, yeah, don't make it miserable. Do, like, tiptoe into this if you're not already built. It. I use running as as a, a way to try to maintain fitness when I don't have time to go train jujitsu. So, like, I could, I could literally go from not working out to go running and – and be done in 40 minutes. So it's a quick workout. I'm showered. I'm clean. And 40 minutes later, I'm, I'm ready to continue with my day. And I could some, sometimes I'll even run uh, a fast mile in the morning before work. I'm, I'm, I'm home relatively quick, hopping in the shower, take a cold shower, I'll stop sweating. And my, that, that workout is, is so fast. It's like sometimes it's hard to 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 have an excuse to not do it because it doesn't. It takes me getting up a few minutes early. That's it. Literally a few minutes early. Go out there, run hard. And you don't have to do a mile. Maybe you say I'm going to go run pretty hard for five minutes. And and really what this article is kind of advocating is don't run all that hard anyway the first time you do it. But um, it's it's just it's a way I've been able to try to work out when I'm not able to do jujitsu. A big thing, I guess I'm off the article entirely at this point, <laughs> is music versus podcasts. I run way faster when I have music on than when I have podcasts. So if I'm doing a long run and I want to be chill and, and relax and just kind of enjoy it, oh yeah, I listen to a podcast and it's kind of a way that you 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 know you're not out there alone really. You're listening to people talk. But if I want to run a fast mile, I put music on and I just I just go as quick as I could. So anyway. It talks about having the right surface. Now get back on the article. (laughs) Have the right surface. So this actually matters with how uh, your legs will feel after the run. Um, If you're able to train on pavement or asphalt or concrete, concrete I think is 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 pretty bad as far as it's a very hard surface. Asphalt's better on your legs. Um, You you know, and you can go run on a trail or something like that. Um, th- there are positive and negatives of that. Like if you could, you're more likely to twist your ankle on a trail, but the, you know, you can't beat uh, a dirt surface as far as, um, you know, being like a more natural thing. Anyway, the the surface you're running on matters. Check out the article for, for more details about that. But uh, try a few different things out, especially if you're experiencing some some shin pain or some leg pain after your runs. You might be running on the wrong surface. And the beauty about running, you you only basically need running shoes. And that's all the equipment you you need. I mean, Gary, you have to put on pants or shorts. 
um, <laughs> a shirt would be nice. Have <laughs> well, you yeah, don't well. have to. You don't have to. You tend to run a little faster when the cops are chasing you anyway. That's true. <laughs> but a, a lot of his time is hiding. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, Byron, you're talking about the right surface, and that made me think about us. You know, we always warm up uh, running around a mat, which is nice and soft. Wonder if we could take a piece of a mat, put them to the bottom of your shoes, and run on pavement that way. If it'd be softer, you're on something, Gary. You're okay. This is the this is a turning point here, where Gary's on his way to becoming a millionaire. <laughs> no, G- Gary, here's what you do. You start a service and you've got two guys that go out with an individual jogger and they've got like four mats. You line oh, them up. And as the person starts running, you take the last one, you put it in the front. <laughs> That's a good idea. And think of the shape you would get in. <laughs> as to, uh, moving the stuff. Um, you know, what those guys would have to do is take care of your body, which is point number seven here. Uh, running is a full body workout. You know, you're, you're not just moving your legs, you're swinging your arms, uh, your core is staying stable. Um, so basically what she's saying is be in shape, uh, do some strength training on the side, you know, do some push ups, do some sit ups, do some squats, uh, you know, get your whole body strong and, uh, that's going to prevent injuries and just make you that much a better a runner. So, uh, let's do a little bit on the side too, and, uh, make our whole body strong and flexible. Don't forget, uh, you know, uh, mobility. Don't forget, uh, flexibility, uh, include that in there too. We're, we want to be a well-oiled machine. Yeah. They, they also talk about cross training is an important thing. And of course, this article is meant to how to start running. It's not how to stay in shape while you're not doing jujitsu. <laughs> but, you know, I'm looking around at my situation. Uh, running is a big part of it. It's, I'm going to be riding my bike more. And uh, Byron. My, I have a kettlebell, a single one. But with that one kettlebell, I could do quite a bit of different exercises. Yes, yeah, Gary. When you're riding your bike, do you do it with or without the seat? <laughs> it it just it just depends on on the mood I'm in, Gary. I guess. Okay, just checking. Yeah, that's uh. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I fell off the bike track on that one. Um, <laughs> so just I mean, have a few different things because it it. This is you could look at the taking making the uh, a positive a negative into a positive. It this could really be a way you explore just fitness in your life. Let's just say uh, you're like a lot of us. You, you, you know, you got into adulthood and you were kind of not doing anything physical, and you find jujitsu. You love it. It's fun. It's great. So you train jujitsu. Now is the time to take a little break from jujitsu and learn how to be fit without jujitsu. And you and and have those off the mat things that you can enjoy. Like I learning isn't all that fun for me, but occasionally I'm like, I got to download a new song or two to make it, to be excited to go run. Or maybe you tie in, you know what? I don't start listening to the BJJ break podcast until my morning run. And then I'll listen to it. Uh, and that's how that I'll, I'll save it until uh, as like a reward or a punishment to make your run more miserable. Um, but just kind of have little ways to, to make it, more enjoyable. And so, yeah, like for me running, I'm going to do more on my bike. Uh, I'll probably go like, uh, like my wife and I can't or canceling a vacation. We had, maybe we'll go on a, on a hike or a backpacking trip. I think going outside and hiking is probably pretty darn safe. Um, yeah. so th- there's just a lot of options like, a, yeah. And a kettlebell, a single kettlebell. I, I could, I could do several workouts that I need to be uh, more proficient at anyway, and, and it would really get me in you know, shape like the Turkish get up and, and do some swings and, and those sort of things. Yep, curls. Curls. Someday I'll be able to do a curl. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Find you a good squat rack and get set up yeah. for a kettlebell. <laughs> yep. But you know, only I, I wish I had a pull up bar. And uh, I had there's one at work, so that's good. I'm good to go on the pull up bar, but you could do pull ups are so valuable for jiu jitsu. Well, let's just say you're you're running and uh, you're running in the park. You see a tree, just do some pull-ups. I've done that before. There you go. Yeah. Sometimes it's like you pull the tree down to you, and it was too small of a tree. Oh, well, I was a little smarter than that, Byron. Okay. Yeah, but you know, I, I like the point you were talking about. You know, you download new music and it gets you excited about running. I've done that before. You know, I download new music and it's like, man, I can't wait to get to the gym to work out so I can listen to this. And, uh, you know, 
kind of makes you go well. And, you know, we were talking earlier about, you know, music to, uh, uh, to wash your hands to, you could download some, you know, some of those songs while you're running too. I think that'll be a, you know, teach you to wash your hands and you got music to listen to at the same time. That's good. So what is your, your guys' go-to songs to sing while you're washing your hands? You know, uh, I just use the ABC song. You know, I, I try to go through that five times before I finish washing my hands. Five times, Gary? Well, I bet that gets confusing for you, Gary. It's hard, <laughs> enough, one, it's hard enough one time through. Yeah. When I say go two times, but I figure if I do it five times, I'll be even cleaner. Yeah. yeah. How about how about like the Dirty Deeds by ACDC? Done Dirt Cheap. That's yeah. a good one. Yep. Not a bad one. Uh, yeah. I'm just trying to think of songs that would be kind of weird. You know, the, the one thing I'm thinking of is we're talking about running here. And, you know, what happens if everybody likes running so much when their gym opens again? They, you know, hey, you ready to come back? No, I think I'm going to become a runner. This could backfire. No, it. I don't think that that's – so the, the two are uncomparable. Uh, running is a way to get fit, and if you do it right, it could be uh, – Okay, <laughs> just as a blast, and we do get the social interactions that we, uh, you know, you get to go see your friends all the time. Like, there's no comparison. You're going to go to a place where a bunch of your friends are hanging out, and go hang out with them, and that counts as a workout. Like, it's yeah, I think that's a, that's a, that's a big part of it. As we need to find ways to stay a team during this thing, and and to and like Joe was talking about, have some interactions with each other, and 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 maybe you know every. Maybe on Mondays it's it's the team's running day and post your runs on here and 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 just kind of share that as a team. I don't know. Yeah, uh, it'd be great because you could talk smack. You know, Joe, you're only running an 18 minute mile. You know, what's your problem? And you know, just make it just like regular jujitsu where we all uh, give people a little bit of grief. I like it. Okay, Gary. Gary likes to give some grief. Yeah, well, and Gary, Gary, I don't think people are going to start running and, and give up jujitsu. I think the opposite is going to happen. People are going to run for three days, and they're going to be like, "Holy crap! I didn't know how much I like jujitsu." <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just remind. Well, I, I wanted to ask Joe a question. Joe, me and you, we are not runners. To be honest, I hate running with a passion. Are you planning on running at all? I I kind of have been aside from this just because I've been through periods of time where I run and yeah. it's been good for me. But yeah, I do not like it. Yeah, I think I'm going to stick with the uh, the bike with the seat. Um, <laughs> with the seat. Okay. Your, well, you're your legs will get stronger now. if you don't have the seat. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Gary got complained on. He tried to sell some of his uh, bikes on online and everyone that came to see it was like where's the seat because he's, he's trying to explain how to use it and he's showing demonstrations and stuff but the, eventually the police get called the crazy thing is everybody who came over not one person wanted all three of my bikes i was selling byron bought them all without <laughs> even in yeah. a second so uh glad somebody bought them yeah and i'm getting good use out of them <laughs> uh, yeah it, the, the i don't know gary you should have just kept the seats and put it on the side, you know, like throw it in the garage or something, but you didn't even do that. Yeah. Sorry. Like, I will never need this. Yeah. Once Gary went seatless, he's like, I'm never going back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, speak, speaking of hand washing, um, do you guys cough and seize into your hand or into your elbow? Well, I always did into my hand, but I've been trying to switch now. So I yeah. cough uh, just generally quite a bit. Like I, I just have I have several al- allergies that I basically ignore, and so year round I I cough a couple times an hour. It seems like, and I've gotten pretty good about coughing in my elbow. Uh, if I'm on the mat, I cough into my rash guard. Um, just I think it's a polite thing. I like that's I'm not it, now is now if I cough I can't assume that I'm that I'm not sick cuz I we don't nobody knows anything as far as uh it, what the status is but if it's if it's April or July or whatever and I just sometimes I just cough <clears throat> I just have to clear my throat I could have coughed instead but yeah I just I just lift up my rash guard and cough into my my rash guard cuz coughing into your elbow while you're on the mat is is you might as well just cough into their face. Like 
that doesn't help either. <laughs> now, <laughs> Your elbow is going right where their face is. So. I, I would agree. But the, the reason I asked is there's been a lot of information about hand washing in the media lately, but I haven't heard anybody talking about making sure you're washing up to your elbows. Oh, especially yeah, if you're, yeah. especially if you're a coughing to your elbow kind of guy. So I, I've been working on that. At least if I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt, washing up to my elbows. Yeah. So here's, a, here's, okay. Here's the new thing. <laughs> this is terrible. Um, so sing, sing your song and put, and put it on the, on your phone and get a song going for your hand wash, do the entire three minute song or whatever. And if you have long sleeves, also, basically, do laundry up to your elbows with your sleeves, because like, and just say, "Hey, man, I cough a lot in my elbows. Got to wash these sleeves." And then you walk around for two or three hours with wet sleeves. <laughs> man, you did find something, Joe. Here, there's a weakness in our system as far as coughing into our elbows, but not our elbows stay dirty. And every time I lock elbows with Gary, I know I'm getting all his viruses. Yeah, but we're having fun, Dosey Doan. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's true. So uh, the other thing I was thinking, you know, I, I still could train jujitsu. My wife does jujitsu. So really, she's in the same boat I am. If I'm going to get it, she's probably going to get it. There's not a lot we could do about that. Um, so, yeah, I, I still have a training partner at home. And uh, and I could I could go watch some instructionals and and we could we could do some of those and we could continue to learn and grow. But it won't be the same as if we're at the gym training with with the team. But uh have a little you can still have some growth uh technique wise with with uh, if you do it just right and maybe it's a good way to introduce jujitsu to a family member just hey can you help me for a minute i gotta try this i'm gonna try this uh this really mean guillotine see if you like <laughs> i don't know guys if you want to support the podcast we have patreon uh that's that's been a big help uh people pledge between a dollar to three dollars per episode and uh, it's it's pretty simple. I may add a five inch BJJ brick gi patch, virus free. Um, it it comes. I mail it anywhere in the world. So man, I'm glad that they'll be sterilized. I'll put them in the sun for a little while. How about that? Before I mail them out. And uh, yeah, it it means a lot. We do have a lot of great supporters, and you you guys that are on the support team always have my ear. When they send you send me an email, BJJ brick at gmail dot com, or message me on Facebook and have a suggestion for the show or um, have a question, you guys who are Patreon supporters get get my attention so quickly. It's like, man, you, you are willing to support us. I need to try to help you the best we can. So uh, next week is our topic episode. <laughs> We've been doing BJJ by the month, and I might be making a, a change before this actually comes out to, to the month's training uh, because this month has been uh, back attacks. And it looks like it's going to be cut short on a lot of gyms. And I don't want to shortchange you guys on, on getting that time and, and training on people's backs. So we, we might kind of switch focus to off the mat training and, and how to study technique online properly. I don't know. Uh, just some ideas uh, just to kind of adapt that as I think about it now as we talk about it. <laughs> so looking forward to that, guys. Sounds fun. Well, um, yeah, it it is kind of we're at a disadvantage talking about anything like current event wise because we do record quite a bit in advance. But anyway, uh, we do what we can. <laughs> stay safe, my friends, and stay sweaty. And don't forget to wash your hands up to your elbows. Yep, train hard, train in a hazmat suit if need be. <laughs> uh, get, get, one way or another, guys, uh, train hard, train off the mats, tra- train however you can through this. Uh, time of tribulation and uh we'll, we'll see when it all blows over guys yeah we'll uh we're still we're still podcasting and you still need to be getting in shape as well thank you for listening i hope you find the time today to roll after all the best way to get better at brazilian jiu-jitsu is to do brazilian jiu-jitsu